Hey folks, Armin Hammer here. You are about to watch a wonderful new episode of The Sand Podcast, where we talk about everything from the CrossFit Dubai Championships to the future of these sanctioned competitions to the philosophy behind why CrossFit is changing things the way it's changing things. Of course, sprinkled in with all of that is some good old movie talk. So you can jump around by checking out that table of contents in the description below and let me know what you think. See you guys next time. Welcome to this episode of Statements Admiring Nonconformity. Yeah. Yeah. I, I fully support that title. I support the title too. It's very kind of, I'm in the ninth grade, I'm finding myself, you know, I just read 1984 and Brave New World back to back. I've yeah. started to dress in black. I carry books openly and not the ones that are assigned in class. That's the vibe I'm getting off of that one. Just you know? like... You're like, yeah, well, I started reading Albert Camus' The Stranger, but exactly. actually I read it in French, so it's Le Tranquille, <laughs> however you're yes, supposed exactly, to pronounce that. Exactly, exactly, uh, exactly. I'm not speaking from, from experience oh, on that at all. No, of course, of course not. not. I want mm. to find a picture of Goth Armin, you know, with his like <laughs> fucking mesh arm sleeves, uh, his Bauhaus t-shirt. The eyeliners. That's what I want, yeah. 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 Uh, that Those name, pictures exist of me. That comes from uh, Gordon Wagner. Gordon Wagner. Okay. Gordon yeah, Wagner. For Gordon Wagner. Thank you very much. Of the podcast. Yes. Huge we are all of our for podcast. Gordon Wagner. And that's the correct. Correct. Yes, we are. Um, yeah. And so you may you may not be hearing Chase's voice. That's because Chase is... Uh, in Shanghai. Yeah, he's, he's probably coming on his way at some point. He'll just jump into the Which the is episode. offensive to pirates. Is it? Is that no, what that I means? I don't mm -hmm. think so. I don't know what that means. It's offensive it, it, to gypsies. It's got to be offensive to Chinese, I would think. <laughs> <laughs> to Chinese. Is yeah. that, <laughs> that was offensive to Chinese. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think that Saying is that. Yeah, well, where putting does, it that way. Yeah, well, where does this phrase "got Shanghai" come from? I don't know. The city is Shanghai, yeah, in China, true. ain't it? But would it be would it be insulting to the Chinese for that to be used if the action of Shanghaiing somebody is probably British? Mm. Like it probably is referring to something that yes. some jack off Brits did at some. And there's point. a lot of words uh, in the English tradition that refer to other cultures that are very offensive for a whole host of reasons. So, and we don't have to catalog them here. We could though. We should. That should be the start of every episode. Oh my God! Chase is with oh, us. Oh yes. <laughs> Chase wasn't radically late at all. He was no, just no. a little bit late. Chase, you look fucking destroyed right now. Oh man! What is going on? He has to put cream on his this face. Brought to you by cream. By cortisone cream. Nice. Wow. All right. Chase. Chase smells is going like to go cream. Balls. Chase is going to go cream in the bathroom, <laughs> and then we're going to pick up the podcast. Uh, yeah. So you're right, but maybe we should start every episode with one historically <laughs> culturally <laughs> -color, insensitive, culture thing. insensitive mm. phrase right. explained for all of the listeners. All right. Yeah. Uh, um, and well, today's interesting. Is all right. So, fun fact: uh, this is actually not offensive, but it is fascinating. Uh, and this is a very most people know this already, but just in case you didn't, I thought it was fascinating. Where you know India pale ales, for instance, get their nickname uh, has is again comes from comes from the British military, and it has nothing to do with those uh, those uh, those beers having any uh, relationship to India, other than you know. India Pale Ales, they're characterized as being extremely hoppy. Where does that come from? Because in the day when people were stationed in India, far overseas, they found that hops, which apparently act somewhat as a preservative, I think is the idea, don't quote me on that, that if they heavily hopped beers, they would uh, last the long ship rides when they would ship them to soldiers all the way, or people huh. stationed all the way in India. Therefore, people in India, Brits who were stationed in India, became accustomed to these much hoppier beers, and therefore that style became known in England as the India Pale Ale. What a shame, because those beers fucking suck. They are so good. They're the worst beer on the face of the planet. As Let me tell you another fucking fun, pa fun fact about uh, IPAs. Uh, the that reason they're for men that they're for men who like to drink men's beers. No, the reason why IPAs are so popular amongst all the fucking hipster ass mm -hmm. homebrew kits. Let me hear it. It's because it's the cheapest and fastest beer that they could possibly make. So that's why everyone is like, I just started my own brewery. Uh -huh. Yeah, I brewed. Uh, <laughs> I brewed a, a, an entire keg's worth of IPA in my bathtub, and yep. I'm gonna call it 
fly pa there you go because mm-hmm. it's super fly listen there's a lot of subtleties to other styles of beer but the, I, I i will not i will not get on board with this i i not if a beer is not good necessarily just because it's intensely hoppy however as someone it is palate, it's good because it's intensely alcoholic it's, that's that's right it's it's good because it gets you turned um <laughs> the uh what is that nobody says that <laughs> they do now um uh they're good because my <coughs> palate became very accustomed when the whole... Like, by the way, I'm old enough to remember a pre-craft brewing thing back when beer essentially meant, you know... When men were men and beer was beer. When, when men were men and beer were beer. And the first one I ever had, I think, was Arrogant Bastard from San Diego, uh, which is... They don't even call it an IPA, but the first intensely hoppy beer that I ever had and became addicted to those things and continued to drink them for years. So I celebrate them. They were not a dad beer when I came of age to drink. They were the new young hip thing. Mm-hmm. I'm part of that generation. They're the Led Zeppelin of beers and we <laughs> have agreed that Led Zeppelin is cool. They are the beers. Led Zeppelin of beers. There's so. a LaCroix on the table. And? Mm. I feel like that tells me everything I need to know about IPAs. There you go. If you yeah. enjoy LaCroix's, Mm. Well, I'll tell you what. The reason how much can I trust you about an IPA? This actually does tell you something about IPAs, but it's not what you think. What this Lacroix tells you about IPAs is that they're I like so to suffer while I drink because they're so <laughs> fucking good that I, that alcohol became a problem, <laughs> and I had to give it up forever. And mm-hmm. that's why I am drinking. I LaCroix think what right it now. says is that you have bad taste in beverages. Oh, what's no, the sir. Uh, what's the one that has the artwork? By Hunter S. Thompson's dude that does, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Does Flying a, Dog. Is yeah, they had like yeah. the the Angry Bitch like IPA. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, that's the one I like mm. ruined IPAs for myself on. <laughs> I took it to the river, uh, fresh out of the store, not oh. refrigerated. Uh oh. In like eighty five degree weather, and I was like, "The fuck is wrong with you? What <laughs> beer was, did you I think was, was like, going to be fine?" It will get cold uh-huh. on the way there. It was like sitting on uh-huh. ice. It did yeah. not. And then I had to drink it out of spite to prove a point because uh-huh. I was like, "No, I'll be fine." You got sick, and it, did you yeah, get yeah, the, it was the awful? Did you get the mental imprinting where now if you smell, <laughs> yeah, if hops, I smell IPA or it hops, makes you sick? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah I, that's, I think by definition, if a beer is very hoppy, it's terrible. I think no, that no, no. that's boo. a one to one relationship. Boo, boo, Second, boo, boo. the more hop is in a beer, the worse of a beer it is. All lies. But I will say that I had a similar imprinting thing happen to me <laughs> on one of my first times. Uh, one of my first times ever getting drunk, I. Uh, or at least after I went to college, the first time I was getting sick drunk, I, I, ha- I drank a bunch of Jack Daniels. And uh, when I drank a bunch of Jack Daniels, I got super sick. And as a result, if I smelled whiskey at any point after that, even when in my heaviest drinking days, I literally couldn't smell whiskey without getting sick. So yeah. it happened. So uh, so weird, weird traumatic memories aside, though, uh, IPAs <laughs> are delicious moments, and they're I for better what people. Trying to say. They're, they're for better people. <laughs> it just means you're <laughs> superior. To all of us. That's exactly. Fine. That's what I'm saying. I'm all right with that. That's I'm just saying. not at all what that means. That's, I'm pretty sure that's what it means, Armin. Um, no. I'm, you know what? We're going to agree to disagree on this We're one. not going to agree. I'm going to keep hammering this point. All right. The but next 40 minutes of this podcast. Temporarily. <laughs> uh, I like other styles are we talking of beer, about, too. Are we talking about IPAs? Like, Are we just talking about beers? Is that how we opened up the show? Has been, yeah. yeah. No, how did we make it to IPAs? Wow. We amplified we got there the with fun fact. Oh, no. Actually, Chase, fact we, got there by, we got there by your favorite means, which is we were basically playing a game of chicken where we were trying to say something culturally insensitive or racist, and mm-hmm. I diverted it to beer. So. Ah, yeah. There you my go. favorite pastime. Yes. <laughs> Your favorite way to open podcasts. It almost worked, guys. That's all yes. I'm saying. It almost worked. It almost worked. Uh, I cannot, for the life of me, remember where we left off with all this CrossFit game stuff. There's been a bunch of stuff. Has there been since I, last week? Dubai talked, signed on. Did so we talk Dubai about Dubai? Not signed on yet. Dubai hadn't signed on okay. yet. No. So Dubai okay. is official now. Mm-hmm. Dubai is official. It's the, officially the first CrossFit Games sanctioned mm-hmm. event qualifier Mm -hmm. and uh strange times So you know what that means what's that it means crossfit hates women and the environment (laughs) correct oil money loves slavery Uh uh-huh is that yes. a slavery thing in, in the UAE? No, uh, that's well, slavery. Not, no, there's not technical slavery, but there's a lot of people being paid pennies a day to build those towers who come from poorer countries in the Middle East, and if they try to leave, maybe they're not able to. 
<laughs> so I don't really they're know. maybe not allowed to leave the work camps that build those towers. Yeah. So I'm just saying. I don't you know, know a lot about Call the it what you will. UAE. Uh, arose by any other name. I know that Dubai has been around for, uh, I think, since 2012. This will be the sixth year. I know that they... You know, the entire city has was only been around since 2012. Correct. It was, it was just built, built out of glass from the fucking <laughs> desert. The desert, that's right. Since 2012. Uh, he dope. And... <laughs> I, I think that they're really pumped about being the first qualifier. I think it's really interesting that they're not only the first qualifier, but uh, they will be qualifying someone for the CrossFit Games before the Open starts. That mm. is By quite months. unique there. Yeah. By the way, you might know more about Dubai than I do here, and you might enlighten the listeners. Who is the mastermind behind the Dubai Fitness Championships? How uh, did that all come about? I thought His name you is might Blofeld. ask that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's exactly it. His name is Blofeld. No, it's uh, it is this guy right here. Hold on, I have to look into my my um, Instagram. It's basically Jack's handled Middle Eastern Prince. It's <laughs> it's handled uh, for like one of the the Sheiks. princes, the sheikhs. Yeah, and uh, one of the guys who runs it is from Austin. Actually, the other guy who runs it is Saud Al Shamsi. Uh, Saud Al Shamsi is, let's see, Saud Saif Al Shamsi is the director of the DB DXB Fitness Champs. He's the founder of Dunes CrossFit. Apparently, he's a uh, he's been to regionals twice, mm. and he's a alumni of the University of San Diego. And uh, I think he is the man behind all this stuff. Mm-hmm. I don't think he's the money behind all of it, but he's definitely the guy who's running all of it. Gotcha. My I, dear sweet brother Numsi. Mm-hmm. Cliff knows that reference. I don't recognize that reference. Golden, Golden Child. Child. I have no idea what that is. Golden Child? Come on. That's oh. that's a movie we should watch. I don't I don't know, well, but Kanye makes has a lyric that says Sweet Brother Numsi. Yeah, like that's that. it. That's but a reference. I never yeah. got the yeah. reference. So that's a reference to the gold for, to Golden Child. If you've never seen Golden Child, it's one of the coolest movies ever it's basically a supernatural buddhist crazy weird ass american studio film from the 80s where they decided eddie murphy is a thing eddie murphy uh, from from beverly hills cop is a thing what if we just took axel foley from beverly hills cop eddie murphy and threw him into a high concept horror action movie and they did exactly What's that. What's the name of this movie? Uh, the Golden Child. Wait, is that the one where he's Buddha? Uh, that's no. the one. No, that's not the one where he's Buddha. No, that, that came years, years later. What, what it is is it's basically Eddie Murphy plays just Axel Foley, but by a different name. He plays the same character, basically. And he's someone who like recovers, lo- finder of lost children. He goes and recovers like kidnapped children. And then a mysterious Asian woman approaches him about finding basically the Dalai Lama, like a kid who's been, uh, you know, who's who was born and basically he's the chosen one. Cool. And so he goes on a quest all the way to Asia. It has like like wisps of like big trouble in little China in it. And Charles Dance, who most of you know is uh, Tyrion Lannister, Tywin Lannister from uh, from uh, Game Papa of Papa Lannister, Papa yeah. Lannister. Tywin, yep. Yeah, Tywin Lannister. He uh, He's the bad guy. And, of course. Uh, over the course of this film, this amazing, amazing film, uh, you see him... Uh, meet a sexy woman who's a half snake. You see uh, 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 um, uh, weird fucking voodoo doll shit. There's a fucking... Uh, basically, at the let me put it this way. At the end, Charles Dance becomes a giant winged skull demon that flies around Los Angeles and gets killed with a fucking Kandarian dagger by... Axel Foley at the end of this movie, and That's why awesome. more people have not seen this movie? I do. It's weird as shit. Yeah, and it's actually, great. The, the, we've we've encountered a couple of bizarre gaps in Armin's movie knowledge. That not only movies that he's not this seen, one I but it's not. I don't understand that. Like this and Legend. I think the Golden <laughs> Child and Legend are kind of the two must-have movie nights because they're reasonably well-known-ish movies high concept awesome genre movies that not only is Armin not seen he's never heard of them which I just find weird well that's the thing is that I most people who I bring up Golden Child with have not seen nor even uh, heard of I feel Golden like Child. I'd heard of Golden Child yeah, yeah. I said it was the one about where Eddie Murphy's Buddha and I wasn't I quite think, there but I think I, think I was thinking the same are, thing are wasn't you, I what's the movie you're referring to it's that terrible movie he made in the uh, 90s where he was bald and he uh, what was that movie where he plays like a Buddha like figure 
Like that that was a real movie. No, in the I 90s. thought I was talking really? Yeah. No, I was pretty sure I was talking about this yeah. movie. I forget what that one is called, but I am pretty sure that's what you're thinking. In this, he's very un Buddha like. He literally is just playing the same fucking character uh that he does in the Beverly Hills cop movies. No, I mean it, it's basically a slightly uh, believe it or not, a slightly more serious, more, more hardcore yeah. uh, Big Trouble in Little China yeah, yeah. with Axel Foley as the protagonist. So were you thinking of Norbit? <laughs> yes, that's, exactly, <laughs> Norbit, that's yes. exactly what I was thinking of. It's kind of like the uh, it's the Cobra to his... Uh, I'm trying to think of like a softer Stallone movie. It's the Cobra okay. to his Rocky. There you go. There you you go. Well, here's the thing. is that It's like if... If Sylvester Stallone had made a movie where he turned into a werewolf, and then we tried to compare <laughs> that to Rocky, I would say yes, because it's like it's if Axel Foley fought demons instead of drug dealers, and that's that's explicitly what the movie is: Axel Foley versus weird Asian demons, which is fucking cool, and it has some amazing sequences. In it. There's one where he has to like pass through some trials, a la like. Uh, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade and like solve riddles and to get through a temple except this I think predated Indiana Jones and the Last oh, Crusade. Oh yes, quite a bit. Quite a few, a few years. years. And, but it was a really fucking cool, great movie. You know? And by the way, when we're saying all of this, I can see behind your eyes that you're thinking this is poorly made and not uh, very well executed. This is state-of-the-art yeah. ILM special effects. Thing. Wow. State-of-the-art yep. special effects for the day. Everything looks fucking awesome. This is the peak of like practical effects right mm -hmm. before cgi started to become a thing yeah. here this wow. is as yeah you have so i guess i should watch that movie we should that if that used to be on netflix if it's mm -hmm. still on netflix i think we should bump that pretty close to yeah. the top of the list for i said we got this and also parties. we got we got legend in there and also we got the crying game crying in there game i'd say those are one. now the three top candidates all great experiences we should create an instagram although, poll yeah although i'm i'm inclined to go with legend or the golden child here just because everyone knows a little bit about the crying game and stuff like that but they, the fact that these just come out of the blue here, listen guys we've got a lot of life ahead of us yeah. we watch a lot of movies Mm -hmm. we can just we'll do them all anyway so the dubai crossfit championships as they're called cool. now and so to bring you back to the golden child for a moment in <laughs> classic eddie murphy fashion yeah and this is when i say it's the same character because i really want to put a bow on this uh, to that con to to the kanye lyric he's the whistling lyric. the beverly hills theme yes well no, theme no just song. but basically how clearly, like, like how Axel Foley got gets into situations is pr clearly on the script level. Um, maybe in the first film, they were like he sneaks into a place, and so instead, Axel Foley would do the thing where he would immediately start just shouting and playing a big Eddie Murphy character, or just doing a really kind of questionable gay voice or whatever he would do, and he would just force his way into all sorts of different situations that way. So he definitely does that. And the best one and the most the one in Golden Child that's fantastic is when I believe Charles Dance at an airport tries to steal this like Kandarian dagger from him and he puts on this weird vaguely Middle Eastern accent and starts saying, oh, and starts referring to Charles Dance as my dear sweet brother Nunzi. And he says, forgive me, I have stolen this dagger from my brother Nunzi. You must arrest me. And there's this whole thing where he just randomly starts calling him my dear sweet brother Nunzi over and over again. It makes little sense, as much sense as it's making now is me explaining it. That's how much makes sense it makes in the movie, but it's hilarious and great. And apparently Kanye West... You know, uh, obviously. Yeah, uh, I'm trying to think of the song, yeah, yeah. but I can't think of the song right now. But clearly, It'll you know, strength recognizes strength. He knows. And so that's why it is. So to just wrap that up. To now, button up we that can tangent. now talk about Nunsi's competition in... Uh, in uh, Drive uh, Slow. It was Drive Slow. <clears throat> drive Slow. <clears throat> From late go. registration. Anyway, right. so the event is put on in honor of... Uh, I'm assuming HH stands for His Highness. Mm. So I'm going to go with His Highness Sheikh mm. Majid bin Mohammed mm -hmm. of the United Arab Emirates, who is this guy. Who, he's he's mm -hmm. under Instagram as HH Sheikh Can we come up Majid. with different things that HH could stand for? Um, uh, like hot honey. Hot honey Sheikh Majid. I'm not sure he'd appreciate that. I'm and not ready I'm to also defend other sure cultures. I'm I don't know. Piss him <laughs> off. And this is the thing. It's like I'm worried. The thing I would worry about going to uh, this type of competition or going to UAE is that I'm sure this uh, His Highness is a super nice and chill dude, but. 
uh, if you go to one of these countries, let's say you just happen to accidentally trip and hit this guy in the balls by mistake mm-hmm. there it's like you he, he could like have you torn apart by dogs and then there's <laughs> nothing that could be done about it there's no legal recourse i if, if again, you happen to piss the guy i off. know <laughs> about as much about the uae as uh i'd say pretty much anyone else in the united states my age no yep. and that hasn't been there that hasn't been there mm-hmm. so that's to say i know very little about it there's some I, not great things. I've heard some not great things. I've heard some. I've heard but some you kind can of tasteless surf indoors. stuff. Right, but you, you can snowboard there's in snowboarding the desert. in the desert. That's right. They're the tallest buildings in the world. Super uh, villain what shit. What more could you ask for? I, I guess I don't know. Everyone has sweet yeah. cars. The cops have Lambos. Like those are all yes. things that I know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's clearly about nothing. Dubai. Not, nothing sketchy behind that. Oh, fun fact in uh, you in UAE, uh, they that if you uh, have illegal drugs in your bloodstream. That counts as possession. So they can arrest you for almost anything. And then while you're arrested, they will draw your blood, test it, and if something that's illegal there, and drugs are super fucking illegal there. Alcohol is is illegal there. Alcohol is illegal there. If it's in your bloodstream, that counts as possession, and and they can just charge you and hold you indefinitely. They can hold you indefinitely, I believe, anyway. But that's that's a fun fact. So That's uh, cool. So don't... if you're. um, So what I'm saying is that if you're arrested in Dubai with drugs... Don't eat all of them at once. What I do know, what I do Hide know, in your rectum is that uh, that's the last place they'll look. Yeah. Um, what I do know is that they have been, they being uh, the Emiratis, have been very aggressively campaigning to bring more CrossFit into their mm. country. Now, uh, Sheikh Majid bin Mohammed's. Uh, uh, his process, his reasoning is that like many other developed nations, mm. they're starting to get out of shape, especially mm. the more wealthy members of their community. And I think what he was originally trying to do and what he's trying to do with the Dubai Finnish Championships, now the Dubai Cross Championships, at that point was to be like, hey, this, you can do this thing. Mm-hmm. Like You guys should try this thing. And that's why, and we've talked about this on the show before, that's why Dubai would like recruit crossfit coaches to come in and and open gyms and stuff Mm -hmm. like i actually know this guy um who was he this happened to him he like Mm. he got an offer uh to come and open a gym Mm -hmm. and it was like we'll pay you this like exorbitant salary we'll put you up in this condo like you know we'll give you a car Mm -hmm. all you have to do and you and we'll pay you and uh you'll just get to like coach and run this gym as you see fit and and he was like, yeah, I went and I showed up and I was there for three months. And every time I would ask him about when we were going to open the gym, they were like, let's just, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it like tomorrow at a business meeting. Don't worry about it. In the meantime, like, let's go party. Uh-huh. Like, let's, let's hit the clubs. And he was like, every, every week it was like a new supercar uh-huh. that he was, he was given to like drive around every week. It was just like a new wad of cash. <laughs> and every week it was like, next week we'll talk about the gym. Next week we'll talk about the gym. And eventually he was like, I've got to go home. Like, this is my job. Wait, like, wait. <laughs> why? But first of all, why the fuck would he go home? <laughs> second question, second follow-up question. Do they need an official <laughs> podcast? Did, <laughs> did I not? Did I show you that email I had? No. Oh man, I Share feel like it. an idiot now. What happened? Hold on, I'll, I'll see if I can. Find yeah, it. look it up. In look the, it up. In the meantime, I, I'm just saying, putting it out there. Like a great way to encourage fitness would be to have an official podcast for the Dubai Cross now CrossFit Championships. Correct. And that official podcast could be hosted by some guys who are uh, very respectful, <laughs> but kind of eccentric. <laughs> <laughs> kind of think outside the box a little bit. Come on. And we can y- make this happen. Most of us don't drink, so we'd fit this right in. This is true. Oh, yeah, yeah. We would fit right in. Uh, Saudi Arabia. Never mind. You got it's an different. email from Saudi Arabia? About someone looking to open up a gym, and they wanted me to come be a coach. Do you it. Uh, yeah, you should have pulled the trigger on that. Because yeah. <laughs> it seems sketchy as fuck. How'd they get it my email? It's sketchy as fuck. <laughs> super sketchy. But super it sounds sketchy. pretty dope. Yeah. It's super fucking sketchy. If they're worried about people getting too fat, uh, alternate idea, just stop... You know, fucking m- making Bugatti Veyrons out of foie gras and caviar. 
<laughs> or whatever the fuck they do there. There might be other contributing factors. Well, I is just what assumed, you know, just spending all day la- in a reclining couch being fed grapes by a topless woman will yes. put on the pounds there yep. pretty fast. That's what I yep, imagine yep, yep. all of them are doing just all day. Yeah, I'm making me regret this email even more. <laughs> <laughs> How long ago did you get that email, Chase? Oddly enough, it was right after right after the flow incident. Oh. Dude, for sure that was real, and for sure you fucked up. <laughs> Someone reached out, what, you're unemployed? How would you like to make 100%. six figures paid all in... They should oh, lead with the number. They have eight, they have ATMs there that dispense gold. <laughs> I, I, that's <laughs> no not, way. That is not a fake thing. If we had, if Soundboy were still here, he would look that up. But <laughs> it is a real thing. You can actually go put in your card and get like fucking gold doubloons out of a uh, out of an ATM. <laughs> it's a real thing. That's so fucking ridiculous. I don't, know, I don't know if I can handle all that. So yeah, it's all yeah. good. That's ridiculous. I, like my parents have gone and they stayed at the Bourgeois. Mm -hmm. and uh they were like telling the story about how they got picked up via uh phantom Mm -hmm. they got picked up by rolls royce at the airport wow and taken to the air to the Mm -hmm. hotel and i was like that's just a feature of the hotel that's just like one of the things that i don't know maybe it was their room i don't know what it was but it was like that's just what they did it's just, it's just like they're like listen listen they're like we can't afford this like listen guys we are our, our garage is just fucking lousy with phantoms <laughs> <laughs> so really if anything please we just doing us a favor so we can get to the verons in yeah. the back this is Actually, this is just so the battery doesn't die i've heard that the uh one of the events at the uh 2018 dubai crossfit championships will be to dodge phantoms for yes. quality oh that would be for good. quality that's right for quality well, if you get hit you're out so oh, okay gotcha 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 <laughs> Yeah. Uh good. Um, yeah. That's uh so so Dubai is becoming a thing and I I can see uh I can see where maybe CrossFit's official communication kind of didn't hold up to mm-hmm. the standard that people would want. Mm-hmm. CrossFit's CrossFit's like official announcement of this entire thing left a little something to be desired because yeah. the way they officially announced it this is literally the way they officially announced it. Mm-hmm. Greg Glassman and CEO Jeff Kane woke up one morning and were like, we're going to call Justin from the morning chalk up. And we're going to tell him everything we're doing. <laughs> and Justin was like, Oh, you guys want to have a, a phone call like on the record right now? Uh-huh. Like, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yep. And so that is how the news broke. Mm-hmm. And then everyone freaked the fuck out. And mm-hmm. was like, I'm going to wait for an official CrossFit announcement. I'm going to wait for an cr- official CrossFit announcement. Because until then, Armin is lying. Because until yeah, then, yeah. Justin and I are lying. That's right. Which, but incidentally, about this Dubai Fitness Championship, it finally proved that there is no fucking... Uh, there's no there's no pleasing some people. Because linked below your actual fucking announcement of the actual official CrossFit Dubai Championship, there were still people like, fucking speculation. You know? <laughs> uh, he's just like, it's like, is this how CrossFit disseminates information now? Through leaks? I'm like, these are not leaks. If they're saying it. If they're right. saying it out loud. Uh, it's not a leak when it's a fucking press release yeah. from the actual CrossFit Incorporated. So a little bit of homework, guys. I guess technically it would be a leak. It's more like an official leak that they mm-hmm. want everyone to know. So yeah. does that count as it's a leak? kind of like how the New York Times leaks information by printing it on the front of newspapers and then sending it to millions of people. Huge leak. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. Not millions of people anymore. That's God. true. They, they, uh, the they failing m- New York Times? Lying Hashtag. New York Times. Uh, they made this announcement by by giving the information to outside press first which freaked some people out because i guess people really wanted to hold on to whatever regionals meant to them and so in a strange way they kind of shot themselves in the foot with how they announced it it's good for me Mm -hmm. i like it i mean Mm -hmm. it worked out real well it worked out really well for me for the show for justin at uh, morning chalk up it worked out really well for all of the outside media because now we get to actually play a role in this mm-hmm. fucking thing the way that media does in other sports and, and industries. Maybe that yep. was the right way to announce it. Then. So yep. in my opinion, that that was the right way to announce it. Mm-hmm. But I think that in the way that they sort of like presented it to everybody, they maybe shot themselves in the foot because mm-hmm. essentially what someone who is not in the know experienced was in their mind, wild speculation and rumors that the thing they love the most has been taken away from them, mm-hmm. followed by regionals, the, regionals, followed by the single announcement that all regionals are gone and now you have to qualify for the games by winning the Dubai CrossFit <laughs> Championships. Mm-hmm. And yeah. when you look at it in that way, mm-hmm. 
and you don't have necessarily the context of what we've been talking about on our yes. show, what I've been talking about on YouTube, uh-huh. what the you know other articles have come out. I'm sure other people are fucking covering this thing. And you're only reading the most hyperbolic comments Correct. under the thread to confirm and your worst fears. All you're seeing, yeah, all you're seeing is like, holy shit, CrossFit is dead. Like that yeah, is yeah, the yeah. only thing that is running through people's minds. Which will and, be the t- title of this podcast. Correct. Um, and I think I think you know it it leaves a weird taste in people's mouths because what they want is they want to be basically given here's the new plan. Mm -hmm. And what they were given was fuck the old plan guys. (laughs) (laughs) How about anything else? Yep. (laughs) Yep. It's kind of like, uh, it's kind of like suddenly being told that, uh, you know, listen guys, there are going to be some major shakeups here at the company, but we're not going to tell you for a few weeks what they are, but yeah, that was, brace uh, yourselves. I, I felt like this was a lot of people's first introduction to how HQ like really operates. They're mm. like, oh, I thought this was such a well-oiled machine. <laughs> like, why are they not planned out? It's like, nah, they're, they're just figuring it out and yeah. they're going to do whatever they want to do. If they thought, they don't care about you yeah. or their structure. Yeah. If they thought that the, uh, that the, 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 the company that said, uh, dumbbells for everybody, like six days before they announced the first dumbbell workout or whatever, uh, is, is a well-oiled machine. Then they, then, uh, yeah, that was not accurate. Yeah. The, then they don't know what oil is. That's right. <laughs> Goddamn right. Oil well, is sanded machine. Yeah, that's right. Oil <laughs> is the stuff on beaches, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, so I think I think people maybe don't understand mm-hmm. why it happens that way. Yeah. You know, I know for a fact that Greg Glassman has been essentially thinking about implementing this at least for the past three or four years, at least, possibly longer. Mm-hmm. And at this point, he was just kind of like, you have to take the Band-Aid off at some point. Mm-hmm. Like, this just has to happen. And so... Uh, <laughs> He he Good did expression. what? Well, he he did what any uh, he did what what any executive with unlimited power in their company would do, which is just fucking said you have to do this now or you guys lose your jobs. And everyone was like, "Oh fuck, we have to do this now." And that's <laughs> why you haven't seen any more details about this thing because guess what? Justin Berg and Dave Castro are mm. trying to figure out what the yeah. details of this thing it's are. BDE. Yeah. Well, at a certain point, I think that's also why I think the, this a lot of this came because of layoffs. Like the first step before they can really devote resources to figuring this shit out was probably saying, like, listen, we're going to have to lay off a bunch of people. And therefore, they kind of had they, they sort of had to, you know, uh, rip the bandaid off internally. But unfortunately, because those people are people. Uh, there's no way to keep that information secret. So while they are, so like immediate, that's why I think a lot of this happened like so soon after the last CrossFit Games. They're giving themselves a lot of lead time to essentially say old way out. You know, now we've freed up some resources. We're going to put those resources toward figuring out what this thing is. But for right now, stay tuned, everybody. But here's an indication of where we're going. Yeah. You know? When you look at it that way, you know, it's pretty reasonable and makes a lot of sense. Mm-hmm. Another way to look at it, for example, is what I texted you guys earlier yes. today. Mm-hmm. Is, Please. Uh, I have had a, a fucking fantastic time reading the comments on the CrossFit Games Instagram, Ooh, which yeah. for some, mm-hmm. for a it couple got days, off for a while. Yeah, for a few days, they turned the comments off because it was just yeah, yeah. people being like, fuck whatever you posted. <laughs> what the fuck's going on with my favorite thing, uh-huh. the regionals? And uh, and so I'm a huge fan of people losing their goddamn minds over this because people are losing their goddamn minds. And here is yeah. one of my favorite comments. <laughs> I, I stumbled on this earlier today. Uh, so disappointed with the new changes. Takes people like me, regional team member for two years, completely out of play. The only way to make it to the games now is to be a full-time athlete. And that caters mostly to single folks. I have two kids. How am I supposed to do that? regionals made it possible for me to train three hours a day and be part of something so wonderful so big to be a competitor again i'm call, just so sad about this whole thing call child protective services yes. i i'm just trying to figure out it's like uh i i'm trying to see where in anyone's mind train mm-hmm. three hours a day isn't 
at the very least, a dedicated hobbyist. Yes. I mean, <laughs> you, you may not consider yourself a professional uh-huh. by result, but for fuck sure, you are treating yourself like you're a professional yep. because train three hours a day also means you probably eat clean as shit and you don't go out because you're trying to like watch your macros and you're probably like keto sometimes and sometimes you're like, you know what I mean? Like you're spending time going to the fucking yeah, yeah. Uh, chiropractor. Mm-hmm. Remember, the key distinction is a professional gets paid for it. Yes. Well, here's the thing. That's a good point. That the, and I, the thing that stands out to me most in that is the regionals allowed me to do X, Y, and Z, and then it says still yeah, go off the, and compete in something. It's like you're not prohibited yeah. from, doing, from training in that same way, and there's going to be more opportunities for you to go to cool events and actually compete and actually compete at things that people that people will watch. Yeah. So you still get to train, you still get to compete. I, so what is this? It allowed me to something, do all this. Something that I've been kicking around because I am in similar spot. There you go. Uh, Chase, maybe, do you train three hours a day? Uh, not at the moment, but there's yeah. definitely certain times of the year where, mm-hmm. where that's necessary mm-hmm. if you're going to go to something like regionals. But... Uh, but what I've been messing around with in my head is like this idea of the CrossFit Games. Maybe the CrossFit Games isn't the end goal anymore. Maybe the place that offers the biggest amount of money that I can e- easily qualify for is the goal for that year or for that quarter or for that yeah. what the fuck ever. Uh, I think just a lot of people have to change their perspective on competing. You can still do this and it's just as legit as it was before for you trying to qualify for some fictitious regional thing yeah no there's no legitimacy behind training hard or three hours a day for any of this well, <laughs> i don't know i, th- I think homegirl is dedicated <laughs> enough that she is going to uh get her passport to djibouti we just found yes. the uh, founder of crossfit djibouti right i mean there. djibouti right there well, real quick, very just, worked up just to, to touch on that i think a lot of people have anxiety because they think well i got to qualify for regionals and that is an important thing that's something that's that's highly regarded in our community and i got to go and compete on that stage regionals is significant granite games wadapalooza some other throwdown not significant not a feather in my cap but the thing is the fact that things like wadapalooza granite games and or any other throwdowns aren't significant and aren't feathers in people's caps is a problem in fact it's one of the problems they were trying to solve by making this uh, by making this this change. So what we're going to see is no regionals don't exist, but the aura of significance, the aura of significance that surrounded regionals will very quickly migrate to first Wadapalooza and Dubai and Granite Games, and then probably by two years from now, the 32 other throwdowns yeah. that people will actually watch because Brent Fikowski will show mm-hmm. up. Here is an analogy. It's not even so much an analogy as the this is the direct practice that is going on that can make will make people who have only known CrossFit for the last few years understand the value of this. Everyone understands why it would be a bad thing if all CrossFit gyms were owned by CrossFit Inc. and franchises. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Glassman has talked many times about... Precisely seeing, the thing seeing, he tried to combat with the hostile takeover. Exactly, seeing the free market play out in affiliates there, of, of independent affiliates opening up, little guidance there, and seeing which ones rise to the top, and letting those free market forces amongst the affiliates uh, create better things than otherwise would be great if they're all CrossFit owned. Well, up to this point, the middle stage of competition between the Open and the Games has been essentially CrossFit owned franchises. And now, finally, Mm -hmm. a new economy is going to be created, a new economic ecosystem that finally justifies the existence of these outside CrossFit throwdowns, which will grow in number, size, importance, and prestige. And honestly, uh, you know, regionals weren't that fucking impressive as Mm -hmm. events to begin with there. I know you put all your hopes in regionals, folks, but they weren't great events there. No. Wadapalooza, it, it's a better event than any of the regionals events, really. Uh, and we're going to see better and better events uh, come up there as different minds get to get their creative juices flowing in different yeah. locations to come up with new, interesting, different events over a much longer span of time. What's well, not a much longer CrossFit season. That'll be more entertaining. Pe- yeah. Something people can obsess about on Instagram for 
nine months as opposed yeah. to Think two. Think of all the different hashtags you use. So oh, hashtag my God. WZA, hashtag GG, hashtag DFX. And as this begins to happen, by the way, and this is another complaint I can't fucking stand, is people are like, this is going to cost so much more money. Now my athletes are going to have to travel so much in order to compete. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? Our regional, by the way, was in for Texas was in fucking Utah, okay? Yeah. So, yeah, and so I'm just saying that like... The entire west coast of the north... American yep. continent uh-huh. mm-hmm. was in was all of that took place in goddamn San Diego and exactly. Canada West. And oh, so wait, yes, yeah, in North America. And that's the thing is like, so <laughs> first of all, first what of all, continent yeah. are we in? I have no idea. So <laughs> when there's <laughs> Brooke Wells, <laughs> help me. Uh, boy. So uh, when we have not when we have sixteen events. And suddenly, for and then I'm assuming that there are going to be more events beyond the 16 in subsequent years. Suddenly, there being, let's say, no qualifying events within a couple hundred miles of Arizona, suddenly creates a gap in the market, and their market forces will create a new qualifying event in Arizona so that all of the people in Arizona can fucking qualify out of that. These things will happen, but there will be more opportunities for you to travel shorter distances to compete. Now, if your goal is to go to fuck it, if you think that your new way to the games is going to be to go to fucking 12 dip, what is the logic behind that argument? By the way? I still don't get, I'm still, I can't wrap my head around the argument, the idea that, oh, there's going to be 16 events. My uh, athletes are going to have to travel so much more to do what? go to multiple qualifying events so that they can also not go to the games who yeah, are man. these people maybe maybe my team and i took 38th <laughs> at regionals but if we had 12 regionals over the course of five months yeah. maybe we would take first exactly and qualify for the goddamn mm-hmm. games exactly. there's a chance i mean you, you know, know weather conditions lighting exactly altitude altitude's a big one attitude that's right. The don't programming. About, don't forget about ratitude. the bars. The how much the bar spins. The shoes yeah. that are available at that time. Correct. Yes. These are all difference makers. While we're ranting on this, I have one more thing that occurred to me. Like a big part of the uh, a big part of, and we've talked about this a bunch. So I don't want to hit on it too much. I think a lot of the the sour grapes have to do with the fact that people don't like the idea that Josh Bridges maybe won't go, but then and some guy from another country who's less fit than him will be at the games. And I was just thinking, like, um, spent a lot of time in recent years, like, covering uh, other sports for uh, for flow sports, including things like um, uh, gymnastics being one of them. You know, there are there are limitations in pretty much every prestige sport, uh, every kind of elite level sport, on the number of competitors from each country that can go, and they are far less generous than the current distribution that is being forecast for the CrossFit Games. Just, uh, if you look at any, uh, so like look at uh, uh, the one of the, the, probably the biggest, one of the biggest sports in the Olympics is gymnastics in terms of viewership and everything else. Uh, if you look at the podium in any given year, especially in the last uh, several years of world championships, last 10 years, you'll see an American in first place, an American in second place, and usually a Russian in third place. That is not because the Russian is the third best gymnast in the world. Because in the all-around, and it's the all-around competition I'm referring to, they're only allowed to field two Americans. And if one of those Americans, as it has happened, gets injured, they just throw their third, fourth, or fifth American, who also will claim first or second at, uh, in, at world championships. Hell yeah, So America. it's like... There's only two spots for Americans. The Americans, huge, robust sport, lots of spots available for them to go, compete in teams, compete in other things, but they can only field... They, if Someone was saying at one point that if Americans were allowed to compete like all of their national team, they would claim like the first 12 spots in elite gymnastics. You know, so in... in 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 gymnastics, you are allowed Americans get two spots. You know, in our in in CrossFit currently, between all of the uh, uh, all of the throwdowns, which will be uh, obviously a lot of American or at least uh, Northern American athletes will claim, and the spots that will come through whatever other means. Um, you know, we're probably going to be fielding a, a pretty hefty portion of that field. But anyway, it's not atypical for sports to operate in this manner. And this current distribution kind of heavily favors the countries that we have seen athletes coming from in the past. Right. And so. on top of that, that's actually, that's a good point. Um, that's probably my, my, that in, in my mind, that's the weirdest of all the criticisms mm-hmm. that people have is this idea, um, that it's going to be 
that it's going to be a bunch of like shitty crossfitters and because of that the the crossfit games now suck and Mm -hmm. i i think the the strange thing about it to me is the people who seem to be the loudest complainers about the quote quality of athlete dropping at the games which it will that's i'm not that's 100 percent correct it will the average of the level of fitness of a games athlete will diminish that will not at all be because the top is diminished that's because Mm -hmm. now your your floor is much much lower Mm -hmm. but the people who complain about that the loudest are the same people who are complaining the loudest of losing the opportunity to compete at regionals when it's like, hey man, you were given an opportunity to compete at regionals because six out of the nine regionals that took place every year took place in the United States. Mm -hmm. And now these guys have the same fucking opportunity, the same dream to compete at a level that no one in their place has ever competed at before. And that is what's going to kickstart them to be significantly fitter than they've ever been in the past Mm -hmm. in the existing system that we've been in in the past like five or six years when it went open regionals games they had to create Mm -hmm. a fucking south american regional to have a south american qualifier they had to create one Mm -hmm. you think that we're ever gonna see another qualifier out of south america or africa or asia without like within the next like five years if or six years or 10 years or 15 years if it just stayed the way it was Mm -hmm. no fucking way this is the only way to jumpstart this process. It's mm-hmm. the only way to bring the level of competition up to where everyone mm-hmm. wants it to be. And yeah. it might be a little bit wacky to begin with, but fuck, dude, there are a lot, a lot of mainstream sports like golf and tennis where the majority of the field never gets any screen time mm-hmm. unless you pay extra for like the all access like PGA pass or whatever where you can watch whatever people you want the fact of the matter is people who are broadcasting this shit do generally a good job of noticing hey these people have fan bases i'm going to talk about tiger woods and uh jordan speed and phil mick instead of fucking covering the guy who's in 125th chase long like i don't need to yeah (laughs) we don't you're not you're not you're not fucking beholden to covering every single athlete on every single heat you don't need to do that. You can tell the story of the CrossFit games by covering just the best of the best. And that's probably going to make it fucking better because even with 40 athletes, mm-hmm. fuck dude, the first three heats are pretty much a wash. It's pretty boring to watch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No. And by, by, and by the way, and just to, to tack that on as to, to, to tack onto that as well. If you look at an event like um, like the Olympics, obviously we cover the Olympics is showcasing like the best athletes in these various sports, and they're the ones who get covered. And there's a and you know, but spoiler alert, just generally about the Olympics, when you look at this field of sprinters or the field of gymnasts, you're not looking at the 25 best or the 40 best sprinters in the world. You're looking at the, a grouping of them super near the top and then you're looking at the qualifying athletes out of a bunch of other countries who I'm sure are way less fast than the the seventh fittest Jamaican or the seventh fastest Jamaican or way less of a uh, good of a gymnast than that person but here's the thing and here's where I'm what I'm getting to those people in these popular sports that are bolstered by the prestige of the Olympics these athletes who don't qualify for the Olympics are not left out in the cold. There is an entire economy now. There is an entire uh, 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 a culture of other events, other races, other sponsorship opportunities, other opportunities for them to internally within the United States and around the world showcase their speed as runners or their gymna- or their gymnastic abilities, if that's a thing. Uh, their, uh, mm. uh, you know, and that uh, that whole economy exists. It doesn't exist now. So what we're looking at is rather than it's like saying like, wouldn't it be great? If you know, uh, is that all? There's plenty of great runners who have made had wonderful careers in running. Who will who have who are among the third or fourth best in their sport for many years running. Who will never qualify for the Olympics, never uh, never go to the Olympics. And I'm sure for them that does sting a little bit that they can never make it to that level because they're so close. But they still have full sponsored competitive careers as runners, and that's the future, hopefully, of under this model with CrossFit. Is that right now? It seems like it's all 
all or nothing because the only thing we've ever had is the games. When the games becomes an international event that bolsters the sport as a whole and all, you know, rising waters raise all ships, then uh, then there will be other economies for us and for all of the others, for all of the Jared Endertons and Josh Bridges to show up and throw down with Matt Frazier at big prestigious events and earn money and have sponsorships. It just doesn't exist now. But now for the first opportunity, it has the oppor- now for the first time, those economies like exist in track and field and like exist in other sports have the opportunity to be created. Right. And the fact of the matter is, even in those sports, with that type of a cutthroat qualification process where it's entirely possible that you are a third, fourth, fifth best in the world and you don't make the Olympic team because you're also the third, fourth, or fifth best in your nation, the best in the world usually fucking win. Mm -hmm. Like the podium, the tip top of the podium is generally speaking the person who's the best. Mm -hmm. Down below, there's a little bit of shuffling. And without that type of, uh, without that type of like, clarity into the 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 uh nature of the final result it can seem like oh well fuck we're losing so much by by changing this process but if you focus on what the actual end result of this thing is going to be that you're going to be able to say this person is the best crossfitter in the world it doesn't matter it doesn't matter if the eighth best crossfitter from the u.s isn't there Mm -hmm. name him name him (laughs) or her Name the eighth best crossfitter. Hold on, I'm trying to do it. Wait, Chase is actually going to be able to do it. It's Jacob Hepner. (laughs) It is true. Dude, Jacob might might arguably be like first or second, but who knows? We'll never know because his forearms are not arguably first or second. (laughs) Because first is taken. Uh, I'm sorry. uh, And second is friend of the podcast. Jacob impossible workout. Yeah. Does it in six minutes? Yeah, that was that was a little strange. Uh, who who would have called that fit. impossible? What a, what a bunch of jerks <laughs> calling that impossible? Definitely wasn't us. Uh, yep. I guess I guess my my point, the second point that I want to make there is that the only way I just want to because uh, I really liked the way that you put that, Kyle, was that the only way for this to grow. Cliff and Kyle made a fantastic point: is HQ has to step out of the way. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. They are they cannot function as the as the gatekeepers here because in the process of functioning as the gatekeepers in the process of building up themselves, it is necessary for them to tear everything else down. The only way CrossFit Games media exists is if no other media has access to the CrossFit Games. Mm -hmm. The only Mm -hmm. way regionals exists is if there can not be any other event which matches the prestige of regionals, which is why it was so crazy when we started seeing athletes go to Dubai in 2012, 2013, 2014 for a $100,000 payday because it was like, oh, fuck, Like maybe the money, maybe the professionalism, maybe the environment isn't just unique to Mm -hmm. CrossFit and the CrossFit games. And I think it's very clear, like that mindset of we cannot be the gatekeepers. We cannot have this relationship with our own community where we tear them down in order to build ourselves up. That is 100% the place where CrossFit HQ is coming from. It is from a place of supporting the affiliates and supporting the communities. Which brings me to another great point. uh, And just to kind of give our listeners a little uh, peek behind the curtain. um, It's not a coincidence that in this big changeover, the first people who were let go are... Uh, CrossFit Media employees. Not a coincidence. Not a coincidence at all, because unique in the CrossFit world, everybody uh, like one. They had a one hundred percent cut media lockdown on the games. And by the way, all four people at this table have a lot of personal experience bumping up repeatedly mm. against that fucking firewall, because. For the last several years, we as fans of the sport and as for media professionals 
have attempted to cover the games and have attempted to bolster coverage of the games and grow the sport that we love. And you know what? And, and Armin, would you like to explain the, the, the various obstacles we faced in doing that? Oh, of course. Uh, one of my favorite ones is uh, when we first decided, we we're like, you know what? We want to do a Fakowski thing. Mm-hmm. And we reached out to CrossFit and we said, hey, we want to do this Fakowski thing. And CrossFit was like, okay good luck have fun like we have nothing to do with that you can't have any footage from regionals you can't have any footage from the games all of that is owned by us and we were like okay fine so we went out we did our Fakowski thing Uh they watched it and then they recreated it they essentially l- shot for shot. Oh, yeah. Ruby the games using- with Vilner and Fakowski. Yeah, well, that's, yeah. that's part of the problem with CrossFit having a lockdown on all media there. There's their own in-house people who are essentially, I guess, friends of friends of the people who work in HQ. Is that, ah, uh, they're, they're, they're okay, but they're not great. They're not the best no, at weren't, doing media. weren't great and weren't the best. Weren't Let's great. refer to them in the past yes, tense. The weren't recently great departed. weren't the best. I know. I mean, uh, not to, 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 to toot my own very big horn here. But, uh, it's a big old horn. You know, uh, in terms of shooting and editing and making sports documentaries, they can pretty much just dick slap any of the people who are involved, other than Savan Matosian. Savan Matosian is actually really like, good. Yeah. He's an actual uh, filmmaker. Yeah, other, other than Savan Matosian, can pretty much dick slap any person who mm-hmm. works, and many, many other people can, any person who worked for CrossFit Media making CrossFit mm-hmm. Media. So we're going to see a overall uptick in the quality yes. of CrossFit media when actual good media professionals can now cover some events. Because, by the way, in a world where the only competitions that people give a shit about are ones that are owned fully by CrossFit and CrossFit has a lockdown on 100% of the media, it we tr- like those economies, even in CrossFit media, cannot exist. We attempted it for a long time. <laughs> These guys worked exclusively for that website and... You know, there are things that other sports work with us all the time on. Peek behind the curtain, everybody. You know, in terms of if I want footage of a track and field event, I can go get it. If I want footage of an Olympic event, it's real fucking expensive, but I can go get it. I can get that footage, and if I can get that footage, I can make the piece. And if I can make if I can make the piece, then I can promote athletes, and I can create. Then if people dig it, I can sell ads on it. I can sell subscriptions on it. I can build other economies in the CrossFit media space and the CrossFit games footage there's a fucking there was a fucking lockdown on it and so when we would do as you brought up the piece on Fikowski there's a reason if you go back and watch that it might all be on YouTube at this point I don't really know Um, but if you go back and you watch it there's a lot of Brent Fikowski talking about the CrossFit Games and you're not going to see one goddamn second of CrossFit Games footage in it because we literally couldn't get it and that is the kind of thing yeah, that's he, hopefully he, here's how it went I here's how the shoot was planned out <laughs> based on the footage we used I knew what key moments in his career he was going to talk about mm-hmm. so I had wrote down a list for Armin and our shooter Chad to get of him doing specific things that we could cut to, like him having trouble with ring muscle ups. I said, make sure to get him doing the ring muscle ups. He's, he's had trouble with rope climbs at some regionals event or something. Uh huh. Overhead, yeah, overhead squats. Overhead, overhead, overhead squats. Yes. Yeah. Wrote down a list of all the tough movements that held him back at key moments in his stories. Had to film him doing those movements in his gym and make abstract cuts <laughs> to kind of sort of feel like what's going so on. Make there. sure you cut to him. On, make sure we film him on rings so that when he talks about struggling on rings at regionals, which we can't show, we, mm-hmm. have, we have something to cut to. And so the point being that now that the media people, not coincidentally, have been laid off and all these other things are, are happening, that's just a whole nother space for people to begin to, again, create media economies around it and actually have access to athletes. Now, Wadapalooza and Granite Games can sell their coverage of that to, I mean, they were able to do it before, but no one was fucking watching and so it all died on the vine. Now people will actually watch, those media rights will have value and we can begin to pour money, more money into the sport, which doesn't mean less cool coverage of the people you like. It means more cool coverage of the I, people and better quality foot coverage of the people you like. So anyway, I would like to see <clears throat> maybe it's a documentary series or maybe it's just one gigantic documentary mm. about the Kalipa moment. And we just have a film crew mm. and a documentary Ooh. crew that goes around to all these countries whenever they're having their competitions uh-huh. and captures that Kalipa moment when for these athletes. Ham? Which is, which is one rep uh, left. 
<laughs> which is it's it, it was accurately captured in the crossfit film uh every, every second, second counts, counts. Yeah, yeah. whenever we're at the end of the film oh, yeah. nobody had been recording jason kalipa the entire competition mm-hmm. because he's not one of the names yep and then he wins and mm-hmm. you have a sudden pan from the guy that we thought was the main character to jason kalipa yep. who is obviously an athlete yeah everybody else spieler no offense but come on mm-hmm. jason kalipa a man mm-hmm that's going to happen in all these countries that are just now like, oh, shit, we get to send someone to the CrossFit Olympics. <laughs> all these random like real athletes are like, yo, I'm going to come out and try this for 50000 or however much money I could make. Yeah. And you're going to have that moment all across the world. No, that'll be fucking fantastic. And you fantastic. call it the Kalipa effect. Yes. That's cool. I, I dig that. I think that's a great idea. I think I think it's it's uh, it's important to note that you know, maybe people are like, oh, it's, you know, CrossFit should control all of its media. CrossFit should control all of this. CrossFit should control. But the fact is they don't exercise this type of control in the most successful parts of their business. The, the yeah. certifications are, are incredibly successful, but they're not trying to crowd out other seminars. Yeah. The, they could make, a fucking bajillion dollars a year by only making CrossFit specific equipment. Here's a CrossFit barbell, a mm-hmm. CrossFit rig, and requiring all the affiliates to use the CrossFit, uh, you know, med balls. Gross. But fuck that shit. Yep. Rogue came in and was like, I'm going to do this better than you guys can do this, and I'm going to build a business bigger than CrossFit mm-hmm. while doing it. And the irony is... They have, on principle, ignored those opportunities that would have made them lots and lots of money, but clamped down in precisely that way in something that was a huge money drain. Now take a wild guess (laughs) as to the minds behind those specific decisions. The guy who decided that they're not going to, quote unquote, rent seek is probably not the same guy who decided that they're going to clamp down on any sort of intellectual mm-hmm. property when it comes to the media rights around regionals or yep. the games. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, yeah, can, it's, it's, can, you, can, you, can you give me names? Who, who's, who's <laughs> one guy's name rhymes with Freg Flassman, and mm, the other yep. guy's name is David Castro. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but they're, they're the two on the opposite, the opposite sides yeah. of that argument. But anyway, the point being that there is a direct, and this is an excellent, excellent point, there's a direct analog between the fact that, you know, the, 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 CrossFit is directly criticized for their very open policy with regard to certifying uh, coaches and affiliates, and yet that is enormously successful for precisely that reason. Then CrossFit fights off a, later on in years a hostile takeover, if you guys are old enough to remember that, be, and part of the things that are being insisted upon by the people who are trying to muscle in on the CrossFit space is is exactly the idea uh, that they should only um, that because they're quote unquote leaving money on the table by not requiring that gyms sell uh, use only uh, if you're going to carry the CrossFit name you can only use CrossFit branded gear CrossFit branded clothes taking a piece of people's T-shirt sales all these other things you know uh, that is something that that Greg Glassman repelled and the affiliates continue to flourish and flourish and flourish and now that same logic is being applied fucking finally that same logic is being applied to the greater CrossFit throwdown community which it should have been applied to it fucking 10 years ago yeah uh, they, they they're applying that to the throwdown community to the qualification process and hopefully again if the media layoffs are any indication to the media surrounding the CrossFit game so that's just uh, a speculation uh, this is all really 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 good and we're sorry there's no reason to believe that it will not have the same effect for each of those economies that it did for all of the other aspects of their business which is flourish 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 yeah i mean the the fact is uh damage has already been done to that market there are currently maybe six giant events Mm -hmm. and uh i mean events I don't even count Dubai as a giant event because Dubai is essentially the CrossFit Games. Mm -hmm. It Mm -hmm. qualifies only 30 athletes or so, and they're the best in the fucking world. Giant event is like Wadapalooza or Granite Games where you're talking 2,000 people are Mm -hmm. competing over the course of a weekend at these events. Thousands of people. They are a giant event in a way that 
the scale does not exist in the current CrossFit Games system. Mm -hmm. And those types of events, events where people who, I don't know, maybe weren't making regionals or can go and make a thing out of it. Hey, I'm going to go to Miami and I'm going to compete at Wadapalooza in the uh, intermediate team of three and we're going to fucking love it. That only exists now because it's been choked out of every other big event. All the other big events at this point have like lost footing. I mean, you know, you can't count the OC throwdown because they just fucking killed themselves for no Mm -hmm. reason. Uh, But it, it, it events that like, you know, existed outside of the CrossFit game season. If they weren't able to scale up to that sort of massive event size Mm -hmm. and participation size, they weren't able to stick around. And that's a fucking shame because there are every weekend dozens of these little competitions yep. that you can go to. Mm-hmm. Why shouldn't they count? Why shouldn't they be prestigious CrossFit events? Like there's no fucking reason. And yep. only the tippy top are going to be, you know, the events that, that qualify athletes for the CrossFit mm-hmm. games. But you can make that shit out of thin air. I guarantee fucking to you. The moment that they announced, hey, regionals are gone and we're going to be having sanctioned qualifying events, I can tell you right now, I know of two and I can guess at least eight more where they're going to be creating (laughs) events that currently do not fucking exist Hmm. or used to exist that should exist still. Uh, let's find yeah. those previous event directors. Yeah. They're living in cabins by the woods, chopping wood there. You That's need to right. drive up in your pickup and tell them it's time now. Yeah. yeah. Just do that yeah. sequence. That, that'll be your tour there. Find the find the former event directors who are chopping well, wood. Yeah, for, One of them's not too hard to find. No. For yeah. everyone for <laughs> everyone that's worried that uh, the sanctioned qualifier events are going to all exist only in mm-hmm. Dubai, so everyone is going to have to fly to uh, the Middle East. Which, by the way, makes you a fucking idiot. Yes. Continue. Yeah, that's Wait. right. That's right. Uh, <laughs> Is it too late to return? <laughs> just <against? laughs> imagine Chase. Um, just those are refundable, right? <laughs> imagine everywhere that there has been a large, prestigious fitness competition. There will be another one there. Yep. Very fucking soon. Yep. It is not a question of if it will fucking happen. Because guess what? There is money in making those events. It mm-hmm. was CrossFit that wasn't making money off of mm-hmm. regionals, not the fact that regionals cannot make money. It was because CrossFit was trying to do it wrong. Mm-hmm. It can be done. It fucking will be done. And these guys are going to actually be able to create a goddamn circuit where professional athletes will be able to thrive. Yep. It'll just happen a couple years down the road, but it's not a question of if, it is a question of when. Mm-hmm. Armin, you've inspired me. We ought to uh, hold our own throw down there. And That's grow right. The one of those Austin events. Beth Games. The Fit Beth Whoa. Games. <laughs> <laughs> we are going to qualify the fittest Beth in America to go to the CrossFit Games. Only Beths allowed. <laughs> Only Beths. <laughs> That's the one qualifying aspect. Oh, my aspect. God. We honestly, and if so long as <laughs> so long as Bethany uh, Shadburn, so long as Bethany uh, was willing to participate, this could be a viable option. You guys. If we actually qualified a Beth to go to the yes. game, she would one hundred percent be down. God damn right! Because that would we're be sick right in her shit. backyard. Listen, That'd be so we good. eventually, when they open up the sanctioning process, we, we it is now our mission to to even if it is even if, even if it is completely futile and never gets approved uh, we will go through the documentation process to try and get the fifth be- the fit beth games approved as an official sanctioning event of the crossfit games Ooh, i want to do that just so i can see the rejection letter and read it out loud yes on the podcast. and all of that documentation will be here all, you follow the podcast yeah uh, uh i also think uh events that exist outside of that uh november to june time frame that you might think hey this should be in this event like those events are probably going to move into mm-hmm. that november to june time frame because you granite games there's no goddamn downside there's only upside to yeah. that happening you know when i was a kid <laughs> i remember i lived in dallas uh because that's where i grew up <laughs> I lived in Dallas because that's where I grew up, and uh, Mark Cuban loomed very large in Dallas when uh, you know I was growing up because he owned the uh, Dallas Mavericks, billionaire Dallas, etc. And I remember 
Um, and this is an important lesson for me. I remember Mark Cuban was on like the local, some sort of, they did a report on him talking about how he was really investing a lot. I think his company was called HDNet at the time. It's since become a part of a bigger thing. He was really investing a lot in creating a HD uh, TV broadcasting, HD, uh, HD media for HD televisions. And then they had to have a person come on and like show some show the the audience at home oh this is what an hd television is and it was this giant fucking like monstrosity that was super deep <laughs> and like took up like a whole the whole fucking floor this is called an hd television and has this super high resolution display right now it's something only for hobbyists because it costs tens of thousands of dollars um but this local rich guy in austin is like the first sorry not in dallas is like the first man in dallas to buy an hd television and so they they made, he was part of the piece with this one guy like show like literally showing off for the news this is my HD television look it's HD there was nothing to watch on it but he owned one and Mark Cuban was investing heavily in these eight it was a news story that someone owned an HD TV is what I'm trying to say and the then Mark Cuban edge. is part of the same thing and I remember thinking this I remember thinking this thought at the time because I was a child because I was a little boy I remember thought, so stupid that Mark Cuban is investing in these HD televisions. No one owns an HD television. Fast forward a few years, several people own HD televisions. One or two people might have HD yes. televisions in their goddamn hands. God, goddamn right. And so here's the thing. Here's the thing. That, that, that was, that, and then when that happened very rapidly, I remembered having that thought. And I remember then seeing the HD televisions flourish. And I remember thinking, and again... Uh, that's because I had a child's brain at the time uh, that, oh, what an idiot I was because the people who have billions of dollars don't look at the world as it is and just make all of their plans based on that and assuming it's going to be unchanged forever. People like Mark Cuban, who have billions of dollars, makes plans based on what the world is going to be, what it can and should be in the future, where it is going, and he helps facilitate that process because he sees a better version of the world that exists. And I realize... It's where the puck is going to be, Kyle. It's where the puck is going to be, the oh, famous shit. Wayne Gretzky quote. And so I think... I you it's know two weeks in a row we've I, mentioned Wayne Gretzky. There you go. I've looked at all the comments and all of the comments essentially boil down effectively to you know this isn't how it is now and if it isn't the way it is now it can't be any other way. It's a lot of people saying what is why has Greg Glass been investing in HD televisions? No one owns an HD television. It's I'm also seeing a lot of comments on the intellectual level of I saw an HD television on my TV. It doesn't look any better. <laughs> <laughs> that's that. That's that the, this even a step below. That, those those are comments I did here yeah. in the day, seeing news yep. reports no, on true. HD televisions. Of course, won't say by who. Uh, <laughs> you know, as uh, as as Michael Scott says, you miss one hundred percent of the shots you don't take. <laughs> there you God go. So, uh, yeah, that's that's uh, that's it's silly that we are actually having to have a conversation of like step away from the edge yeah. the world isn't over because this competition mm -hmm. that you thought was the most important thing in your life isn't there anymore like yep. hey guess what like you know you're spending as a i don't know hobbyist i guess three hours a day training for regionals spend that same three hours a day training for one of these fucking events that's yeah. going to be around the corner like instead of taking a flight to uh i don't know instead of in texas taking a flight to Salt Lake City, mm -hmm. maybe in Texas we're going to have our own event and you're going to be taking a flight to fucking Austin or to yep. Dallas or to Houston and Beth it's games. the Beth games, right? And if the plane ride is too long, guess what? You should start a fucking throw down. That's what you should do. Do that thing if you think that there needs to be another one in fucking Wyoming. And people are lighting up CrossFit games because uh, understandably they don't have anything to say. Yes. They're like, uh, please, I understand this is frustrating, but just wait until the rule book is released. And people are like, fuck you. Mm -hmm. When's the rule book coming out? I need to train for regionals now. <laughs> and what they don't realize is that no one who has a shot of making the CrossFit games is worried, is worried about this. 
Not even fucking remotely. Everyone who was at the CrossFit Games last year is like, huh, all right, well, I have a couple more weeks of chilling before I have mm-hmm. to start training anyway. So yep. it makes no fucking difference for people who are actually doing it. It's mm-hmm. like everyone who's like who's who's so tenderly holding on to this mm-hmm. fucking thing is the same people that literally only define themselves by that one thing yep. and, and cannot little, let go of that. Little asterisk on, on, on the bottom of this because I can feel the retort is going to be a lot of the guys who are in the bottom of the qualify, uh, like let's say the bottom heats on day three of the CrossFit Games aren't going to maybe get to go to the CrossFit Games this next year, which is b- debatable, but it's a valid concern. And all I will say about that is a lot of those guys probably also in some deep dark place were thinking... I don't fucking know how much longer I can keep doing this until these changes have happened until they're training year round to eke out sponsorships so that they can train for one event. So they can try and qualify for one event where by virtue of the fact that they're in the bottom half of the field, they will make a little money off of it directly, but now they're going to potentially try and leverage it for, uh, I guess endorsements for as long as they can. But now in essence, for those people, and I know everyone's super sad that maybe you know Josh Bridges or Jared Edgerton won't make it to the games next year, but now there are literally limitless possibilities open for those guys. Oh, it is take... a huge, huge yes. boost for the incomes of actually both of those guys. Probably, mm-hmm. imagine how much, uh, how much more uh, money, sponsorships, all that. Jared Edgerton with his beard and his uh, super strength mm-hmm. could make doing this rather than barely qualifying for the games again next yep. year. Imagine if he has multiple events, not unlike, again, I hate to keep bringing it up, but a track athlete. Track athletes get bonuses for going from their sponsors for going to events, showing up, wearing the fucking shirt. They get flown there, first class. They run, they wear fucking ASICs gear, and then they get to go home, and they get to get a paycheck and bonuses for that kind of shit. Especially, and if they do well and they place, they get extra bonuses. Yay! They get to do that now instead of training all year to go to the CrossFit Games, come in 40th fucking place, and go home and say, "Man, I, you know, fucking hope that Fit Aid calls me back." Right, and I think people. Uh, oh, here's one example. I will offer myself a counterpoint, mm. and the counterpoint I'm going to example. I'm going to use as an example is Graham Holmberg. Hamburg, mm-hmm. Holmberg, mm-hmm. R.I.P. Rest in peace, Graham I got, Holmberg. I got choked up there. Yeah, just just thinking Graham, about Graham Holmberg. Graham Holmberg and his dead body. Who? <laughs> he actually is my favorite CrossFit Games champion. I, you know what? I imagine mm. there's a lot of fucking people out there who don't know that Graham Holmberg won the CrossFit Games. Uh-huh. The only man to ever. They beat, just know that Rich Froning came in second one time. That's right. The only man to ever beat Rich Froning at the CrossFit Games is Graham Holmberg, the man that killed Superman. Uh, before he was Superman. That's right. And so I think it's important for people to realize that, yes, in 2010, Graham Holmberg quite literally barely qualified for the CrossFit Games Mm -hmm. and then went on to win. And that is true, but that does not have uh, an effect on the current existing Mm -hmm. format, the new format that has been announced, because... Even in the new format, if you would use that new format back then, there would have been an opportunity for the best in the world to make it. Yeah. And it's true that sometimes top talent gets shuffled in and lost in the fray, but the, the, the truth is still that the best of the best, the Matt Frazier's, the T. Claire Toomey's, the Annie Thor's daughters, you know, the Jacob Hepner's of the world now, they don't they're going to have a better opportunity to make it to the games than they ever have in the past. Yes. And uh, as a another side point, that instance of Graham Holmberg doing that just long since became obsolete as a notion that would apply. If you look at any of the last couple of years, first of all, the year that Graham Holmberg won the CrossFit games, all the regional competitions were completely different competitions. Each individual regional was just programmed by their local fucking regional director. I think the regional it was called that, sectionals back then too. Yeah. Well, there were sectional, there were sectionals and then they had individually programmed oh, yeah, yeah. regional competitions. I think the year that rich Froning qualified for the games the first time at his regional, there was an event where like you had to fucking tie a sled to your 
back that had a, a rope and a, a, to a weight and run up a fucking grass hill that was unique to that regional because they had a fucking they happened to have a grass hill at that particular venue. The sectional that I that yeah. I did in 2010, we had a uh, we had stadium stairs as part of our yeah. our event mm-hmm. because it was it just happened to be there. So the notion, so uh, really point, just the point being that we've long since made it out of the out of the notion that some guy is gonna fucking eke in there at the bottom of qualifications to the CrossFit Games and somehow miraculously, unless he's jacked up on SARMs. Uh, make it all the way to the fucking podium because <laughs> the level of competition Ricky. categorically rose. It's like in the early days of the UFC, you could have like a weird fucking karate guy with a beer belly who happened to fucking win a championship just because it was a fucking wild west. First of and all, that shit went away fast. It's South American ground karate. <laughs> so if you could please <laughs> mm-hmm. accurately describe that. Yes. Who, also, hater. They all, who they also wore Be mullets back then. correct, please. Not only was he was uh, Hoist Gracie good at South American <laughs> South ground American. karate, he wasn't even the best at South American ground karate oh, among no. his family. Yes. They're just like, let's send the smallest and weakest yeah. guy that we've just got to prove and see a what point. this is yeah. about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, why wasn't Hicks never in the UFC, man? That'd been awesome. He's man. too busy making money and and just I just don't know, crushing just ass. crushing, <laughs> crushing, just crushing poon. ass all the time. Yeah. So uh, yeah, did we it. already talk about movie suggestions? No, we haven't. I got some. I got yeah. some too. Get it to me, Chase. This is a perfect time to bring it up. Bum, ba, da, dum, bum, 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 bum. All right. So <laughs> <laughs> are we going to get charged for that? All right. The the three that I got today were uh, all movies that I've seen or mm. a series I've seen. And the first one was Warrior. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The Wrestler. Mm-hmm. 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 And move that phone. It's it's no. sparkling there you go. and <laughs> it's sparkling and Spartacus, the TV series from Stars. Oh, oh, TV series. Oh, interesting. Okay. interesting. Yeah, let me, those let me are interesting. Suggestions. They're all very manly. There's uh-huh. a lot of pecs and abs and things in and, those. And I think Spartacus has tits in it, doesn't it? Boobs. I'm Spartacus? sure. Oh, the series. The You're series. Right. I still yeah, keep yeah. thinking about the goddamn. Yeah, movie. and that, that comes from Dan Luke Hewitt. Yeah, he sent Instagram. me the same suggestions. Yeah, yeah those he, are interesting. He's really pushing those. I would be interested in. The Warrior or The Wrestler. Warrior but is an interesting one. Um, I have seen Warrior. I have seen Wrestler. I've never watched the Spartacus series. I've heard good things. Um, yeah, I enjoyed it a lot. What about Armin? Have you seen all of those? I've never seen any of those. Whoa. Okay, interesting. Hmm. Yeah. How? I think that we should, I, we should certainly throw, uh, I think we should certainly throw Warrior on the queue. Warrior also uses a song by The National. Oh, ah. Well, so that's it perfect. Has two of my favorite things. I haven't seen the Warrior, the Wrestler. We're talking about Darren Aronofsky's The Wrestler, I right? Believe so. yeah. I haven't seen either of those movies. I haven't seen any of the movies that were. I haven't seen Crying Game. I haven't seen Golden yeah. Child. I haven't seen any of these fucking movies, guys. I'd, mm-hmm. love, I'd love to throw Warrior on the queue. I'm not. I don't know what I really have to say about the Wrestler unless we just spend the breast. entire time just shitting on Darren Aronofsky. Yeah, but, that that um, would be just a shitting on Darren Aronofsky fest. Oh, you know what we should do? Mother is now on Hulu. We could. Ooh. We should all watch Mother for the first time and then talk about it. I saw it on a flight. Oh, you did? Uh, they played that on a flight? They highly, highly edited it. Oh, I had really? to Google it. I had to Google, had to Google I was like, what I was actually like, happened. Why is, why is this, this movie, blurred? Why is this movie 15 minutes long? It's like, why is this so blurred? In fact, I didn't watch it. Yeah, Here's yeah. how I watched it on a flight. I didn't have it on my screen. Uh-huh. It was on the screen of the person kitty uh-huh. corner across the aisle from me, and I watched it on their screen because I knew what was happening. <laughs> and I was like, I really want to see how they edit this. And I was and like, why does that person just have the word it? redacted printed across their screen for an hour? Yeah, that whole last scene uh, is is it doesn't play out as as uh, interesting as painfully as you might imagine it would when huh. it's just completely blurred. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Sick. I need to that that could be interesting because that is on I noticed that was on Hulu and I thought well I guess now it's time for me to jump in but I haven't watched yet but since you watched it on a flight on someone else's screen I say that that's still that's still in play but I want to say that I really want to go to bat for Crying Game because both of you guys haven't seen it I think it'll on it'll certainly get interesting reactions and it's something that we heavily talked about uh, on a previous episode of the show and it is on Netflix I believe at least it was as of a short it was time on, it ago. was on one of the main Who? services it was who's, Netflix, it, who's in sure. the crying game uh, uh, Forrest Whitaker Gabriel Byrne and a few other no folks. not Gabriel Byrne oh, not Stephen Ray oh Stephen Ray sorry he looks yes, so, they, yeah. they do look similar yes uh, but Stephen Ray, yeah, and then uh, and then some actually like like it, like there's you can see like an early Bob Balaban before he um uh you know was a thing he pops in there Bob 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 Balaban, Bob Balaban. who am I thinking of uh no I'm thinking of Bob Balaban the British one the guy who's the bad guy in Hot Fucking Hot Fuzz 
Oh, Bob. What? Hold on. What? Simon Pegg. What? That's not Bob Balaban. Not, not Bob Balaban. No, that's why I said I know I'm, I mentioned the wrong name. Who am I thinking of? God damn it. I don't know who you're thinking of. I have of. no idea who you're thinking of. Ewan McGregor. I don't, I don't know. I'm just I always want to call him Bob, but he's not Bob. I, one second. I'm gonna it's figure not this Bob we're just Hoskins, now, but he's not We're he's now not just recording movie. people uh-huh. fucking... Yeah. But anyway, I, uh, dude, Crying Game is interesting. Now, the, folks are... I would, I would think initially that everyone on the podcast listening would have been spoiled on Crying Game a long time ago, but maybe not not honestly yep. maybe not maybe folks are too young to have been spoiled of it when the uh, crying game was a cultural moment the a youth. few years ago so the youth, for the youth the for sample the youth so i'd say you know for crying game don't google it don't look up too much for because there's some twists and turns so it's 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 worth seeing because it's a great movie and it's worth seeing because there are some twists and turns in it that but even without the twists and turns it's sort of a masterpiece of a movie that would just have so much to talk about and that it's not what is usually talked about about it and then we can talk about that would be a window into talking about neil jordan who directed uh you know uh fucking uh the thing interview with the vampire which you know, true. I haven't the other seen day, it. we could know. roll into interview with the vampire at yeah, some Neil point. Jordan is a really interesting dude so uh the, we made some really interesting Jim Broadbent is who I was trying to tell where the fuck what, Bob Balaban I, I came have from no, they don't even look the same no they, 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 they don't, don't even come from the different. same country but I it was well I was one looking. is a small small American man with a teeny head one has a Big head. He is a big, very big, big head. head. That's man. how I. That's how I. Uh, uh, you know, separate people in my mind as yes. well. It's uh, small men with small heads, and yes. then everyone else is large men with large heads. Yes. Well, no, there's lots of small men, men with, with large, large heads. heads. Yeah. That, that, that is the more common thing. Uh-huh. Yeah. But what if this? What if this? What if we threw out all of those movies and we just watched There Will Be Blood? That would be sweet. I would another there suggestion. Blood there. Yeah. But everyone, I feel like it. I, 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 part of it is like I feel like I would like at least somebody to be seeing. Have we? For the first yeah. Time. Have yeah. we all seen there? We have two. Yeah, connect, yeah, yeah. We had two suggestions: No Country for Old Men, and mm-hmm. Cliff. Cliff suggested, "What if we well, did there will I be blood?" Threw in, I only threw in the "There will be blood" suggestion just because I thought, you know, No Country for Old Men. I thought about it, then thought I can't imagine that much interesting discussion to come from it. But that that just instantly reminded me of "There will be blood" because it came out the same year and we're mm. shot in the same place. Mm. So, so like, you know, of the two movies which are paired forever in my mind, "There will be blood" has a lot more to talk about yeah we could talk about a lot more I mean, they both have a lot to talk about i would, yes. I would love to talk about both. another way for us to do this is if we picked uh we picked like a theme that we we followed mm-hmm. by saying like okay we're gonna pick our like you know the the voting on between the four of us our mm-hmm. favorite movie from x mm-hmm. year yep. and move our way up that could be interesting yeah but, uh, ooh, that way that way we have a progression of time are we you have just trying to avoid watching the crying game i i just i don't know i'm not trying to avoid watching anything is that what's happening i here? do think that is i don't like forrest whitaker i'm sorry listen you, you you'll love forrest, forrest whitaker, whitaker in this, this fucking you, movie. if you've never liked forrest whitaker in anything you'll <laughs> like him in this. the great british actor michael kane the most famous Cockney in uh, cinematic history said there is only that his favorite uh, American ever doing a Cockney accent, and he believes the only one who ever got it right was Forrest Whitaker in The Crying Game. You can take that to the bank. That's I guess that's a, that, is a that is a mm-hmm. bankable take that to statement. The bank. All right, fair enough. Maybe we should do The Crying Game next. We'll figure this out. You we'll guys. figure it out. We'll post it. Maybe we'll talk about it next week. But either way, we're going to try and figure out not just what the next one is, but a way for us to have an entire <laughs> progression. You know, another way of yep. doing this is... Uh, is to let individual competitions set up what we're going to be talking that's about. That's right. Is uh, in the last few minutes that we have left here, another way of doing this is to potentially run this in uh, sort of like uh, et tu hermano style. I don't know you guys don't know what that means, mm-hmm. but essentially Your brother? Uh, you basically build an entire game around, okay, uh, this movie is directed by this person, and then you pick another movie that like you know that person is directed or you pick another movie oh, starring the same style. actor like kevin bacon style mm. so you have degrees of separation where it creates this web where the you know, big limiting factor we're working with is is the netflix and hulu thing though. Correct. Yeah, the yeah. tough part correct netflix pri- amazon prime really but yeah. I, I think i think eventually we'll be able to do that let's let's go to let's go to figure this out off the air we'll wrap up right now absolutely all right uh at mr kyle bogart on the most central instagram account on the internet I'm at Cliff Bogart on an Instagram account, still trying to find my identity like uh, folks in the crying game. There you go. I'm at Chase504 on Instagram and Twitter. And you can find me at Arm and Hammer TV. Thank you so much, everybody, for listening, and we'll catch you next week. Later. Bye. Bye.